Thank you. It's an honor to be here, and uh, I'm very pleased to have say that this was my first time in Hiroshima, and I experienced very strong emotions these last two, three days, especially this morning watching the uh, ceremony in the park. I think many of you were there. I, I think it was a very well done ceremony, and I think the best of the Japanese spirit, the best of the Japanese consciousness was evident today. But as with uh, much of the Japanese character, from what I can tell, there was also much hypocrisy today. There was also much talk of peace, nuclear abolition, and people like Prime Minister Abe was saying these words. But I did not believe him. And I don't think those of you who know better, who know history, uh, would disagree with me. I am 67 years old, and Peter and I wrote this last, uh, we wrote about 70 years of American empire. Two biggest losers, the two biggest nations defeated by in World War II were Germany and Japan. Look at them side by side and think about that because in Germany we see a country that literally turned inward and examined itself and felt very guilty about what had happened and what they did to militarize the wars. They apologized, and more importantly, they became a moral force in Europe for peace, a real moral force. Throughout the 1960s, 70s, they lobbied and protested. They were always anti-nuclear. They were never would militarize to the, to, the, to the degree the American forces wanted them to. And when Iraq rolled around in 2003 under Chairman Schroeder, Gerard Schroeder, they said no to the Iraq war. France, Germany, and Russia said no to George Bush. But when I look at Japan since World War II, I see, I see great culture, beauty. From my point of view, I see great movies. I see great music, great food, but I do not see one, one politician, one prime minister that has stood out for anything, for peace, for moral integrity, not one. The only one that I even remember is the one that uh, Obama got rid of uh, re recently because he opposed the, uh, his, uh, he opposed the, uh, he, because that Prime Minister proposed a new policy on Okinawa. I think my question is to you. My question to you is, why? Why? Germany, horrible experience. Look what they did, what they mean. They mean, for me, still, a peacekeeping force in the world. Japan? No, you are simply a satellite state, a client state of the United States. You have a great economy, great work ethic, but you don't stand for anything. When I left Vietnam in 1968 as a soldier in the 73, I thought this was over. I thought we were in a new era, a new age. The United States was finished with its Asia preoccupation. I thought so. But lo and behold, after disastrous wars in Afghanistan and Iraq, and frankly in Kuwait too, after these Middle Eastern adventures, the United States is back in Asia with Obama's pivot to Asia. This policy is not about North Korea. That's camouflage. That's nonsense. It's rubbish. It's about China. And it's about a containment of China the same way we tried to contain 
the Soviet Union in after World War II. The Soviet Union, we inflated into a monster. China, we are already building it up into a superpower that threatens our sole superpower status. This is a very dangerous situation. Obama is a snake. He talks soft, but he's ruthless. He's made alliances. Uh, he sold $12 billion worth of arms to Taiwan. He's resupplied Japan with stealth fighters. Japan has the fourth largest military in the world. No one admits that. You call yourselves a self-defense force? Fine. You are the fourth largest military in the world. Great Britain and China. The U.S. is your full accomplice in this. You are some of our best buyers. We make you not only pay for the weapons we sell you, but we make you pay often for the wars we fight. We made you pay for Kuwait. We made you pay as much as we could for uh, your involvement in Iraq. Listen, we are bullies. I hate to say this, but if you don't realize it by now, I think you do, you're facing a dragon of great, great size here. The dragon is not China, it's the U.S. I, four days ago, I was in Jeju, Korea. Uh, I just come from there where South Korean Navy is building the largest uh, naval base, 400 kilometers from Shanghai, destroying a natural uh, world uh, heritage site, UNESCO site, a soft coral reef, despoiling the land and the water of the inhabitants of Jeju. Far worse than uh, Okinawa because it's right on the, tr it's on the front line with China. They're going to build it so deep, the harbor is, is a natural great harbor. They will build it so that the George Washington, the greatest, the largest aircraft carrier in the world, carrying all kinds of nuclear missiles and goodies, is going to be able to sail through Jeju and control the sea lanes to China. South Korea, armed to the teeth. Japan, armed to the teeth. Philippines, huge investment by the U.S. We've returned to the Philippines. We've controlled the Philippines. We're back in Subic Bay, down to uh, uh, Singapore, a new alliance, uh, a new alliance with Australia, certainly uh, where we already sent Marines, a, new alliance, a, a stronger alliance than ever with Taiwan. All, this, all these islands that are ringing China. Vietnam, Vietnam, where I serve, is now our ally, militarily, against uh, China. We are looking for arrangements in Myanmar, Thailand, etc., and Cambodia. And I heard India. Of all places, India was always not aligned, but now they have made some kind of new agreement with our military. This is very dangerous. This is the beginning of like NATO became, NATO started as a defense, a defense arrangement and it turned into an offense arrangement. The same thing will be true here. This year, the specter of war has returned to Asia. Obama loves Abe. Abe loves Obama because he knows he can get what he wants. Among other things, he would like the Sakaka Islands. Now, I can't comment on that. It seems to me a crazy thing to fight over. But it's not worth it. These are small islands. What matters is that the spirit of Japanese nationalism is being revived with this nonsense from Abe and his group about World War II, about China, the rape of Nanjing, the comfort women in South Korea, etc., etc. So you can talk all you want about peace and nuclear abolition, but the poker game is run by the United States. Drastically, its own armament its ability to sell arms all over the world. We sell 73% of the world's arms. We sell 73% of the world's arms. We make all the bombs, except for Russia and China. We make most of the bombs, and we sell 73% to everybody else. And we include drones, cyber warfare, all kinds of exotic space warfare is coming. The United States is much bigger than just nuclear. It's everything. It's the most dominant military superpower in history. So what are you going to do about it? Get angry, I hope. Get angry like we did. We've put five years of our life into this book and this movie. 
to try to tell people, educate the younger generation about the dangers and the arrogance of being a sole superpower and a growing tyranny that has to eavesdrop on the entire world, put people in jail without motive, disappear them, keep secret files, secret courts, endless, endless big brother state. That's described, I don't know if you know George Orwell, but he described it very well. This is what is happening to the world, and Japan is going along with it docile. I remind you again, my opening remarks, after Vietnam, you people know the dangers, the dangers of war. Vietnam was the last big war in Asia. It will happen again. It is up to you to stand for something, as Germany stood for something, on the European side. You were the losers of that war. You suffered greatly in Hiroshima and Nagasaki and other, and other places. You must process that grief and make yourself strong to fight the bastards who will fight you again and again and bring much pain to the world. Thank you very much. Thank you.